Um, I like, don't know, actually. They might have to be. I can or do live. It. Probably be a good live. Idea. Be a good idea to do it then. Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the August 27, 2015, regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. And we'll start with roll call. Dave Nelson. Here. Charles Anderson. Here. Nick Rico. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Rob McSorley. Present. Seth Garrison is absent. I'm Chairman Jason Greenleaf. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the July 23rd, 2015 regular monthly meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Any errors or omissions? Silent crowd tonight. Oh, All in favor of approval? Good girl. I abstain, please. One abstention. Mr. Rico was not present at the meeting. Next item is the superintendent and operations report. Dave? Um, thank you. A uh, copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of July is including the packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.3 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 97% uh, by uh, BOD and removal and 97% total suspended solids removal. Uh, their concentrations were 8 milligrams each, respectively. A uh, copy of the pump station flows for the month of July was also included in your packet. There were a couple high flows noted at pump station number one, which were the result of ultrasonic erroneously measuring a high level due to fogging within the wet well. At the Industrial Park, uh, Park Street pump station, uh, high flows uh, correlated with rain events. We're currently investigating into the source. Uh, this source uh, right now we're looking uh, monitoring the low flow, so when we get into a rain event, we can identify where the high flows are coming from. Other than that, no other issues were noted. On October 6th and 7th, Glenn Bellaflor and I uh, will be presenting at the training course uh, for advanced wastewater treatment, uh, which is being offered through the, the JETSI uh, program. Uh, this summer, we had three events which we participated in shedding our electrical demand as a part of our contract with main power options. Uh, we do this um, in order to get off the grid during a peak uh, power demand uh, period, and this has a direct impact at uh, reducing our overall electrical charges. Uh, Knowles Industrial Services has returned to complete some punch list items on the the uh, painting within the primary clarifiers this past month. And uh, the EPA has completed um, the attached case study that I provided for you in your packet on the uh, Scarborough Sanitary District project, which eliminated pump station four and upgraded pump station 11. The, the case study uh, can be found on their collection system toolbox page. A copy of this case study and a link to the EPA's um, web page has been posted on our website. I'm happy to report that the district re did receive payment from Maine Medical Center with the uh, for the additional capacity reserve payment due for the exceedance of the approved flows. You'll see these funds deposited in next month's financials. Yesterday, uh, Safety Works uh, conducted a uh, a uh, volunteer audit of our facility. We try to schedule this about once every two years. Um, the audit went very, very well. A couple of minor items they did identify, uh, which we will get, uh, they'll send us a letter documenting them, uh, and we'll address those once we get to the letter. I am pleased to report that once again, Ken Welch has passed the annual DMRQA testing that the district is required to conduct for the parameters analyzed by the district's uh, laboratory. And this month, we received three ODA complaints, one at 7 Old Neck Road. Uh, on August 12th, I re received a call from that homeowner who stated that she had been smelling an ODA since mid-July. I offered to come down to investigate, but she stated the odor ha wasn't present at the time. I advised her to, you know, to please give us a call when she does smell the odor so that we can investigate the situation. I've stopped by the property a couple times since that call, and I haven't detected any odors during my visits. Um, <coughs> on August 11th, I received a complaint from uh, Bailey Seafood Restaurant concerning odor coming from the cross-country sewer behind the restaurant. I had our crew 
check out the sewer and they found no issues and doing so they also talked with uh, one of the neighbors uh, um, who stated that he has not detected any odors in that area. And finally on, uh, on August 14th the homeowner at 5 Hurdle Fence Road uh, which is off of Old County uh, the owner had emailed me uh, stating that he could smell pump station 11. Uh, I investigated and did detect the odor and uh, we um, got the carbon changed in the odor control unit on the 18th. That's what I have for the uh, correspondence, uh, for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dave. Questions for the superintendent? Rob. Uh, high flows in the industrial park. Uh, pump station. Mm -hmm. You say it correlates with the rain events. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have some illegal connections? Uh, what, what is your thought on that? Um, my initial thought is we may have some roof drains uh, that may be tied in, and we just need to find out where they are. Uh, it, it seems it's very uh, the the peaking is very quick. So it seems to be some type of direct connection versus infiltration. And it really wasn't a significant rainfall, was it? Um, no, not not really, not this, you know, but enough that would trigger some puddling. We don't have any issues with any uh, manholes or something under water. Or not that we have found today. We had in the past had some. Um, previous, we had found some peaking issues in that area, and we investigated. We did find a manhole that had some. Um, a significant amount of II uh, coming into it in a, in a wet area, and we corrected that issue. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I think the the majority of the issue is some type of direct connection. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should send a notice out to the people in there that they need to come forth and you know it's a good idea. confess up before we catch them. Yep. Thank you, David. Nick, um, continuing on Industrial Parkway, is that the one on in the Industrial Park by DPW? Yep. Is it, I seem to recall we replaced a line, a cross-country line, from Route 1 down toward there. Did it go to that pump station, that line? I'm not quite sure which mm -hmm. line you're talking about, but I'll look into that. Okay, because I'm wondering if there's another section of that line that did, that we didn't repair or replace that might still that might have degraded over time and caused more II in that wet area. I think it's it's downhill of where the Bessie School mm -hmm. is, and I don't know if uh, that all goes to a different pump station. It does. Okay. Well, oh, it's a line on Commerce Drive. I think it might be. Yeah, I don't think that feeds into the industrial park. Okay. Actually. But it it might also indicate that yeah. something else has happened with one of our lines. Yeah. Especially if you're getting such a quick beat. Yeah. Here's. Um, as for the odors, uh, do you keep an odor log of people calling in, emailing? You're looking at it. I know that you know, when I get an odor complaint, I make sure it gets right into the the report. And I, okay. Uh, and this is how I'm logging. Over. Yes. Okay. Uh, what I was thinking is that next time, uh, especially when they email, that's helpful because it can say they can say when the odor started, what the weather conditions might be, and you might be able to correlate it with what's going on, either at the pump station or at the plant. Well, you never get odor complaints from there, but that's beside the point. Um, Anyway, an order log would be a, a helpful thing. Yes, Rob. Uh, going to the odor complaints, uh, we seem to get them um, more regular in the summer months, right? Mm -hmm. When when things are more active and whatnot. Um, I don't know if you want to reach out to Scott Furman at Portland Water. Uh, they had a big issue with the treatment plant uh, in Portland, and they had developed a protocol relative to uh, when people call about uh, odor complaints and whatnot. And one of the things they wanted to do was make sure and educate people 
whether it's an odor from the treatment plan or not, and, and there were some parameters or something in the conversation that they would have with them that they could key on it or whatnot. So just just a thought for you. I'll give Mr. Foreman a call. Yeah. Somebody said hi. I will. Yeah, and that's a good point, Rob. I mean, I'd, Old Neck Road, especially summertime, La Marche is right there. A lot of odors coming from there, obviously, and Old Neck Road, as far as that's concerned, as well as Old Millbrook, having odor complaints in very two very two areas very close to La Marche. So, mm -hmm. tidal influence on that yeah, would certainly just, be should be noted. Yeah, I think I think to be clear that there are some very strong odors that are generated naturally from the marsh between the middle of July and the middle of, well, actually probably end of September. Um, so folks should be aware of that too and not just jump to the conclusion that, uh, you know, it's a problem with the sewer system. But they're going to call anyway, so that's the, frequently that's the, that's really what the culprit is. Gladys. Hmm? Gladys. I, I used to get calls from Gladys about midnight all summer long. <laughs> Any additional questions for the superintendent before we move on? With none, we'll move on to correspondence. The first item is the DEP wastewater treatment sure. inspection sure. report. Sure. Um, on July 10th, DEP conducted an inspection of the operations of the wastewater treatment facility. A copy of this report I included in your packet. I had spoke about this at the last meeting, but I hadn't got the report yet. Again, the staff's effort resulted in an excellent report. As noted in this report, the inspector wrote, operation and maintenance at this facility are excellent, unquote. Great. Any questions or comments on that? Yes, Rob. This is getting a little old. We're getting all these reports that are excellent. Why can't we do better? <laughs> Good question. I'll try. <laughs> Kudos to the staff. I had, I had a question just on that on the, the second or third page actually. Uh, stormwater, you've got a satisfactory on that, but what, is, what do they mean by stormwater? Is that like a stormwater at the plant? Is that yeah, stormwater control at the plant. Um, we don't have any, uh, we don't discharge any stormwater at the plant off site. Uh, it's all, um, we don't have any catch basin section. And some of these other ones, like energy efficiency, how do they, how do they rate that? Uh, which one are you on right the now? The run rate below stormwater. Uh, third from the bottom on the third page. One, two, three. Okay. Um, that's just in conversations. You know, he doesn't go through and do, do an energy audit at the facility. He asks what we're doing, um, what we've done to improve efficiencies and, and what have you. If you've if you look back in past reports, you'll actually see that we've gotten excellent remarks under the energy efficiency when, um, uh, with regards to what we've done within the aeration system to, to, to manage our op operations and reduce our electrical costs. But it's just compensation. Yeah. And, then and a lot of these are. And then the last one, operator, how does he evaluate? <laughs> <laughs> is that Gary or? That would be Gary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you think you give him a better rating with the rest of the, you know, push it up there. How well do you know Gary? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, he's watching, you know, right now. <laughs> he's, he's in Buxton. Um, oh, no, okay. he, that's just conversation. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Moving on from correspondence, we'll go on to old business. There is none this month. A new business, uh, 401A, 457 retirement plan changes. Uh, including your packet are two <coughs> resolutions and two amendments to facilitate changes to the district's 401A and 457 retirement plans. The amendment for the 401A plan will allow participants greater than 59 and a half years in age to transfer funds from their 401A into their um, 457 plan. The amendment for the 457 plan will allow the participant with assets and outside investments to roll money into the 457 plan. At no cost to the district, these changes <coughs> will enhance our plans for our employees in several ways. One, this will allow participants with a 457 plan fixed interest rate option of 3% to move monies from the 401A plan, which has a fixed rate interest uh, rate option of 1% to the, 
the higher rate um, plan, thus earning 2% more. It will allow participants with assets and outside investments to roll money into the 457 plan. And finally, um, it, it will help in increasing the total assets within the 457 plan closer to the next break point, which would lower the overall plan expenses per participant. Um, I will read the, the, uh, the resolutions here and um, uh, request approval of the, the two results. Uh, can we waive reading of the, uh, uh, no. not if we've read them? Read not them. a good idea with regard no. to a pension plan. They're okay. They're going to want to see that it was read. Okay. As, be read as a motion. Uh, Board of Act. In fact, Why don't we move? I would move approval of the, of the resolution regarding the 401A plan and just let, let David read it as part of the, my motion. Second. Third. Third. <laughs> okay. uh, board of Directors resolution to amend plan. Whereas the Board of Directors um, of the Scarborough Sanitary District, the employer, has assembled in the meeting this 27th day of August 2015. Whereas the employer established the 401A profit sharing plan, the plan to provide retirement benefits for the employees of the employer and whereas the employer has the right to amend the plan pursuant to the provisions of the plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this attached plan amendment is approved, all other provisions and conditions of the plan remain unchanged, and David Hughes, superintendent, um, is hereby authorized and directed to take such further action as may be necessary, appropriate, or advisable to officiate uh, effectuate. Effectuate, sorry. The foregoing resolutions. The undersigned, Jason Greenleaf, chairman of the board uh, of the employer, hereby certifies that the foregoing resolution were duly adopted by the board of directors at the meeting referenced herein, and that the documents attached are the two copies of the document referenced <coughs> in those resolutions. Um, I'll read the amendment now. Amendment to the 401A profit sharing plan of the Scarborough Sanitary District. In accordance with the provisions of the plan, the employer hereby amends its plan effective as of August 1, 2015 as follows. Section 1.8 is changed to read as follows. Paragraph D. A participant may not withdraw any amounts allocated to its employer contribution accounts due to any of the following conditions. The participant has completed at least five years of participation in the plan, or two, the participant is entitled to a hardship withdrawal pursuant to Section 8.4. Um, I think that's good enough. You think that's good? I think this is. I think it would be advisable to approve this amendment. It, it really provides an increased benefit with, without cost to the district or its ratepayers, and uh, just will help facilitate us getting and maintaining uh, high-quality employees. So I think it would be prudent to approve the motion. Thank you, Charlie. We have a motion in the second. Second. We did have a second already. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Any questions? Any further? All in favor of approval? Not opposed. Mr. Chairman, I would move to accept the Board of Directors' resolution to terminate a plan. Would you like me to read this one? Yeah, I can. One. Go ahead. It doesn't matter. Um, I need a second. Second. And I will read the, the resolution and the amendment. The Board of Directors' resolution to terminate a plan. Uh, whereas the Board of Directors of the Scarborough Sanitary District, the employer, has assembled in a meeting this 27th day of August 2015, whereas the employer established the eligible 457B Deferred Compensation Plan um, for government employers, and whereas the employer has the right to amend the plan pursuant to provisions of the plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the attached plan amendment is hereby adopted, 
David Hughes, Superintendent, is hereby authorized and directed to take such further action as may be necessary, appropriate, or advisable to effectuate the foregoing resolution. The undersigned Jason Greenleaf, uh, Chairman of the employer, hereby certifies that the foregoing resolutions are duly adopted by the Board of Directors at the meeting referenced herein, and that the documents are attached are the two copies of the documents referenced in those resolutions. Now for the amendment. Amendment to the 457B Eligible Deferred Compensation Plan of the Scarborough Sanitary District. In accordance with Section 10 of the plan, the employer hereby amends its plan effective as of August 1st, 1st 2015. The plan is amendment, amended as follows. Section 7.5D is changed to read as follows. Paragraph D. This plan will accept a rollover by or on behalf of a participant of amounts attributed to compensation originally deferred together with earnings thereon upon a plan that is eligible deferred compensation plan under the Section 457 of the Code and maintained by a government employer described in Section 457E1A of the Code. Amounts rolled over by or on behalf of a participant to this plan which are attributed attributable only to deferrals under an eligible retirement plan that is an eligible deferred compensation plan under Section 457 of the Code and maintained by a government employer described in Section 457E1A of the Code. Must be remitted in cash and following remittance to the plan shall be allocated to the participant's account should not be subject to any separate accounting requirements under Section 402C10 of the Code and shall be held, accounted for, administered, distri distributed, and otherwise treated as the amount deferred under the plan except for a purpose of determining the maximum deferral under Section 3. In addition, this plan will accept the following rollover contributions from an eligible retirement plan on behalf of any participant who is an employee. One, an eligible rollover distribution from a qualified plan described in Section 401A or 403A of the Code, excluding after-tax employee contributions. Two, an eligible rollover distribution from an arrangement uh, described in Section 403B of the Code, excluding after-tax employee contributions. And three, an eligible rollover distribution from an individual retirement account or annuity described in Section 408A or B of the Code, other than a Roth IRA described in Section 408A of the Code. Separate individual accounts will be maintained for each participant reflecting any rollover contributions made to the plan on his behalf from an eligible retirement plan that is not an eligible deferred compensation plan under Section 457 of the Code and maintained by a government employer described in Section 457E1A of the Code. And that is the end of the amendment. All right, we already have a motion and a second. Any questions about the amendment? I just had a question. I probably should ask before. Now, our attorneys have looked at this and lost it all. Or? Our attorneys have not, but our um, our um, plan, Mutual of America, we does our plan administration has. Okay. We talked to them. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor of approval? None opposed. All right, moving on to the next item of new business. Mr. Chairman, before we go to the next item, uh, I'd like to recuse myself from consideration since there may be a conflict of interest on this matter with me. All right, thank you, Rob. This is uh, the item B, which is 577 U.S. Route 1 Southgate House. Vesta Housing. On behalf of Avesta Housing, Vago Technics is requesting district approval to connect uh, me, and discharge into the sewer the sanitary wastewater flow from a proposed 50 unit affordable housing project. The existing building sewer service will be replaced with a new 6 inch gravity, which will flow by gravity into a 6 inch service stub servicing the property. 
The new building will be serviced by an on-site pump station, which will pump into a 6-inch service stub. Uh, the existing barn, 1,200-square-foot uh, um, structure, will be converted to a community space with a single bathroom. Also, related infrastructure located on the property will remain private. I recommend, recommend approval with the following conditions. One thing I, I forgot to mention in the description is that there will be a 119-foot sewer extension um, within uh, the sewer easement. They are also extending the sewer easement that we currently hold, which only uh, goes up about half their property um, frontage on, the, on Route 1 to the full frontage. Uh, there will be one new sewer manhole there also. Uh, the conditions of approval are uh, the project is inside the original service area with an allocation of five resi residential dwelling units. So consequently, the capacity reserve fee is based on the remaining 45 single-family residential dwelling units without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, and non-residential flow are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per dwelling unit is $2,918.46, and that's based on August 2015, um, and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR and uh, construction cost in index. Based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee due for the 45 dwelling units is $131,330.70, and this fee is due prior to issuance of any sewer permits. Uh, the proposed community space uh, will be used solely by the residents and will not have a kitchen. If future uses of the space changes, a dis additional district uh, review and approval is required. Final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits and professionally surveyed electronic georeference CAD drawings, um, a stamped PDF of the CAD drawings, and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion. And that is all I have. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the caveats attached. Second. A motion and a second. Any questions? Yes. Mr. Charlie. Um, under. Um, under uh, number one of the superintendent's recommendations on the capacity reserve fees, uh, the reference to the engineering news record is December 2014, and the superintendent stated that it was August 2015. I think it would be important that the uh, minutes of the meeting reflect the fact that the uh, capacity reserve fee is based on the uh, August 2015 number since we've had some controversy in the past about yep. calculations of um, fees. Um, and has there been any direct communication with uh, Avesta Housing or has everything been done through It's the been consultant? done through the engineering. So do we have documentation that the issues that that you've identified in your summary of the project are confirmed by Avesta, the owner? Um, not all of them. Uh, uh, some of them, they have filled out their uh, permit, which identifies the number of dwelling units and also the common space. Um, and um, they have actually signed that and submitted that. But with regards to the, the capacity reserve fee and um, I've had discussions with the engineering firm with regards to the community space yeah. uh, being solely used. So I guess my follow-up on that would be administratively, Dave, um, mm -hmm. that um, we should get confirmation from the owners to all of these issues so that down the road we avoid potential um, okay. surprises. And I'm assuming that the consultants do convey all this information, but we have had cases in the past where um, owners have said, gee, I didn't know any of that. And uh, so I think confirmation of these points is always uh, desirable from the applicant themselves and not their representative. Would a um, owner sign off on the approval letter be one way yeah, of doing Yeah, I think that? that would be fine. 
I think that would be fine. I just think that mm -hmm. you should have that. I really think you should have that kind of documentation before you bring it to us, so that we know that you yep. know after we voted on it that an owner's not going to come back and go, wait a minute, I didn't know anything about that. You know, my engineer didn't tell me. He he represented all this stuff to you. You've approved it, and now it's a big surprise to me. You know, so sometimes these projects may be approved, and it might be a year before the owner comes. It could be sold to a different entity, and another entity comes back to mm -hmm. us to finalize the project. And I just think, you know, for for uh, clarity, if we have confirmation from the owners who are applying at the time, that that would be an important thing for us yep. to continue to do. Other questions? Nick. I had a quick technical question. Um, in the sanitary sewer pipe data schedule, they have a link S4, and I couldn't find it. Um, three. That's three. Is that one? Four right there. Going to the pump station. Going from, oh, all right, thank you. Any other questions? No other questions? All in favor of approval? One abstention. All right. Next is item C, which is 62 Muzzy Road, Asian Fusion Restaurant. Um, on behalf of James Yo and BBS Enterprises, uh, Northeast Civil Solutions is requesting district approval to conduct and discharge into the uh, sewer the sanitary wastewater flow from the proposed 4,900 square foot restaurant with 164 seats and a 2,300 square foot uh, square feet of office space. The existing building will be renovated into office space and will utilize the existing sewer service. The proposed restaurant will utilize a new sewer service. Uh, an, uh, an external grease trap will, will be utilized for the restaurant uh, kitchen flow and uh, the requested sanitary wastewater flow allocation of, uh, well, they are requesting a flow allocation of 1,796 gallons per day. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The project is within the Eight Corners Development District with an allocation of 200 gallons per day. Uh, the capacity reserve fee is based on the remaining uh, 1,596 gallons per day of additional sanitary flow uh, uh, above the original al allocation. Any flow above the 1,796 gallons per day are subject to additional approvals in capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee is $14.59 per gallon, and that's the August 2015, based on, based on the August 2015 ENR, and it's adjusted monthly. Um, based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee is $23,285.64. Uh, this fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit. Uh, the, f the flow is limited to 1,796 gallons per day of sanitary waste. Any future flows in excess of the approved amount or flow characteristics are subject to additional approvals. Uh, the district reserves the right to, to approve future tenants to ensure compliance with uh, these conditions. The grease interceptor uh, a permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no grease trap work shall be completed. I do want to note that I did note an error on their plans. In their plan, they identify a 1,000-gallon grease trap in the detail. It's a 2,000-gallon grease trap. It's, uh, that's the uh, size that I had worked with them on. Um, so we'll get that corrected for the final plans, which shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. And then finally, professionally certified electronic geo-reference CAD drawings, a stamped PDF of the CAD drawings, and stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. I'd like to approve, Mr. Chairman, with a caveat attached by the superintendent. Second. Approval and a second. Questions? Um, looking at that flow that they have calculated or gave you, that seems to be kind of low for a restaurant. I, and I checked into it, and it, it, uh, we base our capacity reserve fee on a 90-day average. Um, if you uh, So 
that's and I, I actually did a lot of research on that flow and that's the the amount that I came up with and I compared it to other restaurants and it's not it's in the ballpark. So less than ten gallons a day per seat. Um, because there's 164 seats. 164 seats. And you know, then they have on top of that, they have potential office space. You know, if you looked at just mm -hmm. the flow from 164 seats, that averages out to about 10 gallons a day, and I think that's less than the main subsurface code, which you typically use mm -hmm. for basing flows on, you know? The, um, I, I know I, I researched the flow, and I, I may have made an error. I'll, I will have to check check on that. I, I don't have the data in front of me, but I, I did spend some time on looking at the flows on that project. Okay. Yeah, if you could check that. Um, I don't know. How do we address that if if there's uh, do we have to come back with an amended? Yeah, we would. So do we wait and get the correct number or do we approve it and then have to bring it back again next month? Um, I would recommend, I, I'd move that we amend the motion to approve based on the superintendent's recommendations with the request that he uh, evaluate further the capacity reserve fee based on the discussion tonight and report back to us at the next meeting. And if there is a need that 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 this be reported to the owners also, and that if there is a need for adjustment of the capacity reserve fee, we would do it at a future meeting. So I offer that as an amendment to the motion. Second the amendment. Okay. Did you have additional questions? Well, just on the, the flow. Um, <clears throat> so the building now, it's a, it's a re single family resident. So that gets subtracted out, so it's not the office. Is that what is it? What do you get for 270 for the for the house? Or, uh, uh, 200 gallons for that house. So that would be in addition to what we're charging for the capacity reserve. Correct. So it's really like 19, yeah. 1900, not. So that would push it up. No, 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 no. That's it. The, the the total flow it requested was the 17, or the 1800 gallons per day. And you've um, taken the 200 out? 200 out of that to okay. calculate the capacity reserve fee was based on uh, 69 gallons per day, you know, round okay. numbers. All right. But I, I will I will check check on the flow. I know I did spend some time on it um, and working with the engineer on it. Um, I had an additional question on the technical part of it on the mm -hmm. um, the drop manhole seem to be a lot of times they just cut these out from another plan or something and stick it on here. But I, I think the piping size is incorrect on that for the for the drop manhole. Or she, she, no, it says one of fifteen, no, eleven or fifteen. It's the last. They got a table for the pipe sizing, but I think they're talking about a four inch pipe <clears throat> and then they're it's up in the milk top. Up in the top. Yeah. Drop manhole detail. What page are you on? Yeah. Drop manhole. Oh you don't have it. We got the wrong page. Eleven? Okay, eleven. Fifteen. You get you get different plans from you. Sizing table, I think, for the pipe sizing, but it doesn't seem to fit with the what they're proposing. What are they showing? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, D1, D1 50, yeah. And D2. Let's see it. It's 10. Because I think they're both, they're all 6 inch, I believe. I think there's a 4 inch as well. I can't remember. I'll coordinate that detail with, with the. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that drop manhole, how that works on this on this this one shown, but we must have a typical drop manhole that we use, right? Yeah. Just make sure. This is, this is on private side, but yeah. <coughs> I'll, I'll I'll coordinate that with the uh, engineer. Thank you. Rob, you had an additional question. Yeah, additional two items. Um, going back to the grease trap, you said that it's going to be 2,000 gallons? Mm hmm Okay, good. Uh, last thing, to follow up on uh, Charlie's uh, comments relative to the uh, applicant knowing the conditions of approval. Yep. Um, you know, I, w the, the DEP has this really cool thing is that when you apply to them, you got to give them your email address. And when they approve it, they send you an email out uh, with the approval. I don't know if we could include that as part of the application process, that they provide an email for the owner. Your conditions get emailed to them, and we need to get a reply that they're okay with that to bring it to the board. Just put that out there for the other board members to think about, but that would that way that would kind of relay our fears about the owner not knowing what the conditions we approve are. So, anybody else wants to chime in on that one? I well, say I'm, I'm glad that that uh, Rob likes something that DEP does. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, and he said it in public. And he said it in public. <laughs> oh, oh no. Uh, on television. Television. That's bad for a consultant, man. <laughs> Ben's going to get prints of this, uh, you know, tape of this meeting and uh, run it at coffee. Um, I think that would be fine to do, but I, I still think we need written, I still support the written documentation uh, part of that with something with a signature on it. Get a signature. I'm still, I still lag behind slightly in the electronic age, and I know about electronic signatures and electronic closings and et cetera, et cetera. But um, I, I think I think it's we don't handle the volume of applications that the DEP does and I and I would like the idea of actually having a hard copy. Why not uh, hard copy before we bring it to the board? Well I think Dave should have hard copy confirmations of agreements that he makes no, with applicants uh, I agree. engineers before he before yeah. he brings it to us. Yeah. Yeah, you know, bring the conditions, you know, make sure the applicants Signs agree to it. Yeah. Yeah. And he can use whatever form he wants to confirm that. Yep. Any other additional questions on the amendment? If none, all in favor of approval for the amendments way. Just a tip. Is that showing on there? Gentlemen, all in favor of approval for the amendment? Yes. None opposed. And we had a motion in the second and the original motion as amended now. All in favor of approval of the original motion. None opposed. All right. Do we, know, do we know what type of food is going to be served here? Asian? Asian. 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 Asian, 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 Asian fusion. fusion. Asian fusion. As yeah. much as I know. Hmm. I don't really know what that yeah. means. Okay. <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> Trying to think about whether what other dining options are available in the town. <laughs> My mind's always on food too, Charlie. Uh, item D under new business is the seven month budget summary ending July thirty first, two thousand fifteen. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Ooh, and a double second. <laughs> Let's fight about it. Wendy, you take whichever one you want. I think they came in simultaneously. <laughs> uh, any questions? Errors or omissions? None. None. No, I'll put it out there. All in favor of approval of the seven-month budget summary. 
Unopposed. Next item on the agenda is public comments. We have no public with us tonight. So we'll move on to trustee comments. I'll start down on my left tonight with Ben. No comments tonight, thank you. No comments. Nick. Uh, first of all, I want to wish all those kids going back to school soon uh, good luck in the new year, especially if you're going to a different school. Um, I also want to wish everyone a safe Labor Day weekend, and I also want to wish a happy belated birthday to Rob McSorley. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Keep going. I'm going to use Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> I'd like to thank Ken on passing his annual physical. It's amazing. <laughs> and uh, really, congratulations uh, for uh, what we got from uh, DEP. It's great. I mean, it just uh, the way the people work down there, and it's too common, but they do a wonderful job. We appreciate every bit of it. Thank you, Dave. Rob? Uh, echo um, the great job our staff does, David and the staff, and uh, the glowing reports that we get on a regular basis. Um, we know it's a lot of hard work, and we really appreciate it, uh, the, the fact that we can sit here and, and say that we probably are the best district in the state, if not the top two. <laughs> but uh, also, congratulations to Ken uh, for uh, the t passing the DMR QA testing. Uh, also to uh, Glenn and David for selection to teach at uh, Jetsy uh, in the coming months on advanced wastewater treatment. That's another sign of how good our employees are, you know, that they are being asked to uh, uh, do that. And uh, also some of the employees who are bettering themselves and getting higher certifications. So. That's a great thing. Also, want to wish everybody a safe Labor Day, and for all those students who have gone back or are going back, uh, good luck. Um, and uh, that's all. Thanks, Rob. Charlie. Uh, yep. Yeah, echo the com compliments to uh, the superintendent and Glenn Belfler for uh, presenting at the Jetsy training course. I think that's great. Um, and I'm pleased the superintendent resolved the issue with Maine Medical Center on the fees to be paid. I think that's another feather in your cap, Dave, for getting that done. Uh, congratulate Ken on uh, his laboratory certification. Um, regarding order complaints, I think typically mid-July to mid-late September, we get a rash of complaints, um, especially from properties around the perimeter of, of, the, of the marsh areas. And uh, the majority of those complaints, in my experience and history, have, have not been really related to sewer. They've been sort of naturally occurring from activities in the marshland areas. Um, but still want to compliment David on his investigation of each and every complaint and the follow through of it. I, th I think it's important that that continues. Um, and echoing the congratulations to the staff on the excellent report from the Maine DEP on their monthly inspection. Um, I'd like to thank Avesta Housing for their agreeing to work with us and extending the sewer easement for our convenience, not theirs, um, and uh, over their property. And that will facilitate future, possible future sewer service to other properties and uh, I think it's great that they're willing to do that. So I would hope at some point, David, that you'd, on behalf of the trustees, just express our appreciation for their cooperation in that regard. I will. It's hard to believe that Labor Day is right around the corner here. I'm ha happy to wish everybody a safe and happy Labor Day holiday, but sorry that that heralds the end of the summer season. And uh, I'm just happy that it's not the end of my vacation. <laughs> I guess that leaves me. Uh, again, echoing all the comments and the congratulations to the staff and to Ken um, for another year of passing the test. Uh, I think that's fantastic. As always, uh, our employees are top notch, which is great. Everything we hear is 
everything we hear is fantastic coming out of the district, so that's wonderful. And I'd also like to say congrats to Nick on his new employment. Thank you. Not, not quite so new anymore, but uh, five weeks old. Five weeks into it. So congratulations, Nick. Thank you. And with that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All right. All in favor of adjournment. <laughs> Got to be quicker than that. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Got to get some milk.